man was willing and able at all times to, to what I like to say, fight the good fight. He did the research, formed his conclusions, liked them or don't like them, but you could always understand where he was coming from. That's the best anyone can do. When you have someone of state and stature involved with the research of ufology, the studies of not just sightings of UFOs, but how the government and military is involved, how people are experiencing abductions, and all of these elements really show that there's a lot more to the phenomenon than most people realize. I believe that Stanton was the most prominent scientist who brought the truth to the public around the world of anyone. Stanton was a nuclear physicist, he was a genius, but he was a meticulous researcher and he spoke to the average person wherever he went. People loved him, they loved to hear uh, what the truth is and because they knew uh, how highly respected he was. They grew to love him, they grew to appreciate him. I believe that he is the greatest living ufologist of all time. Despite the fact that when Stan was at a, an event, he was always the most prominent person there, but he never made anyone else feel small. He always made everyone else feel like that they were just, they were valuable, uh, he never lorded himself over others, so I always appreciated that about him. Uh, I, I met Stan pretty early on in my own public career in the UFO field in 2001. And I met him at an event two months after 9-11 mm -hmm. in St. Louis. We were both there. Uh, I wasn't very well known back then, Stan was. We had this tiny little event, maybe 15 people were scared. It wasn't many. And after that event, we were both in the airport on the way home, and he sat me down for a lunch. And I think he wanted to know, what is it about this kid? Is he, is he good? Is he not good? And he sat down, and he was kind of running me through, like, what did I know? What did I not know? I think he wanted to, to check me out. And he was very interested in my opinions of Bob Lazar. And this is, this is actually startling to me, because at that time, I had just finished my first book and I didn't yet have an opinion, a strong one, about Bob Lazar. I didn't know enough yet. Uh, Stan certainly did, and he wanted to make sure that I was on board with the right opinion. It was but the first pushback I gave him. Um, in fact, in subsequent years, I concluded, no, I'm a believer in the Bob Lazar story, unlike Stan. There was always this little point of, I don't want to say contention, but he didn't like the fact that I had this opinion. I could absolutely tell. But despite all of that, um, we always really liked each other. And, you know, I just, I've always been grateful for the time that he would spend in talking with me about all of these issues and providing a, a real sense of leadership. And of course, he was a scientist like myself, and I can only hope that, um, like him, I can be a credible voice so that people actually look at the data and speak for itself. Sam Friedman's legacy in this world, for me, is that he shows that old time scientists, materialist scientists, can break free out of that mold and they can go that one step beyond the purely material data to understand stuff that is metaphysical, that is not completely material, that he can break out and he can, as he did, and understand and help us to understand topics that maybe are not purely scientific. And he showed us so many areas in which scientists are wrong and incorrect. And that is his great legacy, as far as I see. I believe that Stanton's legacy should be that he was one of the, the great leaders of UFOlogy and also the connection with the people that he worked with, him being a physicist. He took the scientific portion of it to explain a lot of uh, technologies connected with it and also the MJ, MJ-12 
investigation that he did is one of the, the best things that he ever did in uh, terms of exposing a lot of the information. I think that he did a great job to show that there's always been a government involvement, there's always been people in the know, and that when it comes to other cases like Roswell, there's so many different areas, so many aspects that you can follow and study for years. But what I think he showed was all the elements that we need to know, all the documented parts that we can actually trace and we can see that verify these claims. And so it's good to have him be able to co go and acknowledge that certain things do happen based upon documented evidence. And it's not just hearsay. There's a lot of rhetoric, but I think Stanton did a great job of providing some substantiation to otherwise outlandish claims. Yeah, I'm going to miss Dan. Um, he was an inspiration to me personally. He was an inspiration to everyone who studies the UFO field. The thing about him that made him unique and special to the rest of us was he he became, especially in the last several decades of his life, a kind of widely acknowledged face uh, for the rest of us. He was the guy who would speak to the rest of the world on behalf of ufology. Uh, he debated with skeptics on Larry King and in all other venues and always acquitted himself just superbly. The thing about Stan is that he was an evidence-based researcher and, you know, in fact, I didn't really agree with every single one of his conclusions, to be perfectly honest, but I always knew where he was coming from and always respected his conclusions uh, because he was careful. He never made the story about himself. It was always about his research. And I, I think it's important to say he never lost sight of the fact that the UFO phenomenon is what it's all about. The other thing about Stan was many things, but one is think about it, he was the last person to consciously use the term flying saucer. He never said UFO. He didn't say unidentified flying object. Stan always said flying saucer. He was in your face about it. Like in these days, we're all moving away from even UFO. They're talking about UAP because UFO is too loaded with whatever baggage. Stan's like, the hell with that. Flying saucer people. And he, he did this because he wanted to emphasize that some of these objects are actual craft. And for him, flying saucer was the best description of that. So I, I really always liked that about him. And maybe it'll be time to bring flying saucer back into the terminology.